Okay. So it's been a, uh, I can say, the time or the days are so quick that we have been, this uh, year is almost ending. And uh, we know that the Lord has better plan or best plan for us. So if you are with me, please turn your Bible in the book of Hebrew chapter 11 as we continue to this series in verse 20 up to verse 29. So we're going to read from this passage as we go to our message this morning. The Bible says in the book of Hebrew 11 verse 20, By faith Isaac also blessed Jacob and Esau concerning their future. By faith Jacob blessed its of Joseph's sons as he was dying and bowed in worship over the head of his staff. By faith, Joseph recalled the exodus of the Israelites at the end of his life and gave instructions about burying his bones. By faith, Moses was hidden by his parents for three months when he was born because they saw that the child was beautiful and they weren't afraid of the king's orders. Verse 24, by faith Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter when he was grown up. He chose to be mistreated with God's people instead of having the temporary pleasures of sin. He thought that the abuses he suffered for Christ were more valuable than the treasures of Egypt since he was looking forward to the reward. 27. By faith he left Egypt. Without being afraid of the king's anger, he kept on going as if he could see what is invisible. So by faith he kept the Passover and sprinkling blood and the sprinkling of blood in order that the destroyer could not touch their firstborn. By faith they crossed the Red Sea as they as if they were on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried it, they were drowned. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you because you are so good to us. We thank you because we have time to, to listen to your word, to study your word, and to be fed by your word. May the Holy Spirit continue to, to, to move among us. And may you speak to us, Lord God. May the Holy Spirit de deliver or give us this message of your, yours this morning. And as we gather online, Lord God, help us to become attentive. May you open our hearts for you, our minds for you. And may we absorb your word. May we be filled with your spirit this morning as you fill us with your word. So thank you, God. May you use your servant to deliver your word. And give us wisdom, understanding for your word. We thank you, God, and we claim and we declare blessings upon its one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, our message this morning is final authority. Final authority. So for the past weeks, we've been hearing the message of faith. As uh, believers of Christ, living by faith is our normal life that away from it, we are living in sin. So God's covenant with Abraham to become the father of many nations was passed on to his son, grandson, and even to his great-grandsons. So there were two promises given to Abraham. First is to have uh, to make his descendants as many a slight number of stars in heaven uh, and then and sands in the seashore. And the second one is to uh, God gave them the land or th this land that he promised for him and to his descendants to inherit. So as his descendants started to grow in numbers, they found themselves living as slaves in Egypt, which is not the promised land for more than 
400 years. So as years went by, this promise might be diminishing in their minds, but not to the one who gave it. Even when things happening uh, happening around us, it doesn't that doesn't uh, incline in in the promises of God. It doesn't mean that. Uh, that that God's word will not come through to us. I, I will repeat that even when things happening around us doesn't incline in the promises of God, it doesn't mean that God's word will not come through to us. So we should understand that that still the final authority in our lives is the word of God. The word of God to the Israelites. God's promise to their forefathers might seem not happening because, because of uh, the situation uh, that they're in. Uh, but, but, the, but for God, He was doing things that they, they don't see. Uh, I like the message of the song that we sang earlier. Uh, the Lord, the God is a way maker. He works in the, in the things that we don't understand. That we do not expect. Okay, so in Matthew 24, verse 20, uh, 35, it says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So everything that we see, every visible things will pass away, but only the word of God will not pass away. How can you adjust the volume, Nathan? Oh, give me a second. That's the microphone. Okay. So let's continue. So God has been preparing Moses uh, to lead them out of slavery. So this promise, let me move my mic here. It's too low. Okay. I hope you can hear me well because uh, I just am using uh, Nathan's uh, Chromebook right now. Okay. So is it clear now? Okay. So God has been preparing Moses. Uh, to lead them out of slavery to fulfill his promise to Abraham. So remember, the life of Moses is well known to most of us. So who, who is Moses? Remember the baby who was hidden by his parents from Pharaoh for three months? Because during that time, Pharaoh's order uh, is to kill or was to kill every male born. Uh, a child, for he was afraid of the number of the Israelites growing so fast uh, because they, they deliver so fast. The uh, Hebrew mother gave, gave birth so fast. So, but, uh, so he, his order to the midwives during that time is when uh, this, if this Hebrew woman gave birth and you see that it is a male a child, you, you have to kill it. You are to kill the child. So this, these things happen in, in Moses' time. So that's why um, the Lord God saved his life to prepare him as, a, uh, as an instrument to, to lead his people or God's people um, uh, from captivity or from bondage of uh, slavery. So when, when Moses' parents cannot hide him anymore, uh, they decided to place him in a basket and put in the river. But when the Pharaoh's daughter saw the baby Moses in the basket floating in the river, she decided to adopt him. And not knowing the uh, letting or allowing his own mother to uh, take to, to care of him. So that's the story of Moses. So Moses was, uh, who was chosen by God to redeem Israel, grow in uh, the palace uh, as the Pharaoh's daughter's son. Uh, but when time come or came, when Moses found out that he is not an Egyptian, 
he began to defend his fellow Israelites from the Egyptians. But it didn't work out according to Moses' desire because he accidentally killed one of the Egyptians and his fellow Israelites treated him as a criminal. So it's similar to what happened to the Lord Jesus Christ. They treated the Lord Jesus Christ as their as, as a criminal. So Moses decided to flee away from, from Egypt and went back to his ancestors' uh, former homeland where he met his wife and started, started his own family. Remember our message before that, that Abraham, when, when he uh, asked or told his um, servant to get his to get wife for his son Isaac, he was uh, the, the servant was sent back to his family or where he came from. And the same thing with, with Moses, what happened to Moses. So the, the wife that uh, this woman that Moses married is from his own um, family too. So they're preserving this godly people during those times. So let's continue. So the, this former Egyptian uh, prince became a shepherd tending his father in lost flocks. So he became a shepherd, and then God used his uh, Mo, uh, Moses' humble situation to save the Israelites from captivity. So Moses' plan is is different, way different from God's plan, because Moses thought of being a prince, he will, or he can rescue God's people, but he didn't expect that the God who promised, or who gave this promise to his ancestors is the same God who will fulfill his promise. So if you will notice in our text, in Hebrew 11, uh, that every actions of these people were done according to faith. Amen? According to faith, which means they rely in God who has the power over all things. So because they knew that the God they serve is the God of the impossible. Listen, my dear friends, if you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are serving the God of impossible. Amen? The God of impossible. That there is nothing impossible with God. Amen? Tell this to the person next to you. There is nothing impossible with God. All things are possible. So how the word become a final authority to us? Remember this, this passage that we have right now. I have three uh, points here. Number one, because the word of God is our source of blessings. The word of God is our source of blessings. Everyone, everyone, or I can say everybody wants to be blessed. Is that right? Everybody wants blessing. And God wants to bless us. He doesn't want us to suffer or to perish, but He wants to bless us. When it comes to blessings, the Word of God is full of instructions on how to experience God's blessing in our life. Because God holds the future, everything that will happen in the future was written in the book, in this book, in the Bible. So everything that we're about to is uh, was already written by God in his book. According to Psalms 139, he says, Your eyes saw my embryo, and on your scroll every day was written that was being formed for me before any of them had yet happened. Is that an, a, a very good or we can say a nice verse to remind us that before we, we were being formed in our mother's womb, God already see us or saw us, and He has a better plan or best plan for us. Amen? So begin to remind our children, as they also will remind their own children, as we release uh, their future blessings that has been laid ahead of us. Always remind your children 
of the blessings that God has prepared for us. Amen. Like what Isaac did to Jacob and Esau, as well as Jacob did to his grandchildren in verse 20 of our text, it says, By faith, Isaac also blessed Jacob and Esau concerning their future. By faith, Jacob blessed its of Joseph's sons as he was dying and bowed in worship over the head of his staff. So they passed on the blessings that God has promised to them. And let me encourage you this morning, let the word of God hold your future. Let the word of God hold our future. Because the future laid ahead for us is based on what God has planned for us. So things might not right, but never be discouraged to remind our descendants or our children for the best plan that God has prepared for us. Amen. If they're sick, tell them God will heal you. If they're in need financially, tell them God will bless you. So no matter what situation, always remind them, encourage them that God has a better plan for each one of us. Amen. So from birth to deathbed, there's someone who gets in charge of our final authority. Our parents were in charge in planning for our lives from giving name up to the time of accountability. Then we begin our, on our own journey with our own decision and effort until the time there will be someone assigned to make a decision for us. Remember, it is the decision you made as your final authority. I remember when I was in the hospital or before we, we, we they did the surgery, uh, I signed this, uh, it's like a last will that what a matter happened, uh, my wife will decide for me. Amen. So if something happened or wrong happened in, during my procedure, or surgery, uh, my wife was in charge uh, to decide uh, whether we, I will stay uh, in 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 the this uh, instrument or or I will or he, uh, he, he she will let me go. So so there will be someone remember that will be in charge for us. It is the decision you, you make or you made as the, the final authority. Like in our home, who has the final authority? Okay. I believe it is the husband who, was, who, who God appointed to have the final authority. But let me encourage you, all the husbands here, make see to, to yourself that you uh, your your authority or your decision is rooted in the word of God. Amen. Make it sure that your decision, every decision that you make for your family is from the word of God. Incline into the word of God or in your own life or in your own life. Who do you consider to be in charge of your final authority? Amen. So we should never forget of this one thing to make. Make God or God's word as your final authority. With God's word to be our final authority, it will lead us to the perfect life that we should have. Like in the church, it is God who has the final authority over our spiritual growth. According to, to Paul in his writing in the book of Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6 tells us, he said, I planted the seed in your hearts and Apollos watered it. Okay, Apollo is the pastor in the church, but it was God who made it grow. So do you, do you, do you picture the... the the scenario of our spiritual life. Someone planted the word of God in your heart. And then, if you are now in this church, 
there's a pastor, including myself, uh, shepherding you to grow, uh, to lead you in a, in a spiritual growth. But always remember, it is God who makes you grow. Amen? No matter what happened, no matter how many messages we receive, no matter, no matter, uh, uh, no matter how many verses we read or we heard, it is God who has the final authority to make us grow spiritually. Amen. Amen. So it is His word that uh, it is His word or God's word that has final authority. Even in the book of Galatians chapter 1, it reminds us that the word of God is our final authority. It says, let God, let, uh, I mean, sorry, let God, God's curse fall on anyone, including us or even an angel from heaven who preaches a different kind of good news than the one we preach to you. I say again that uh, what we have said before, if anyone preaches any other good news than the one you welcomed, let that person be cursed. Obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. So, we always, or we heard, or we always hear this. People from, from uh, I mean, message from religious leader uh, violates or against the word of God. Let be the word of God be your final authority. If the person or even me, including myself, teaches or saying different things than the word of God, don't listen. Don't listen to those people who are trying to please people. But listen to God. Listen to God's word. The true through his word, through the preaching of his word, we will experience God's plan for each one of us. Amen? Amen. So whether it is any religious leader that we heard telling something about the moral or the life that we should live, don't listen to them if it's against the word of God. Because they want, they just want to please man. According to Paul, if, if him or even one among those uh, apostles or or or, or uh, early preachers preaches a different kind of good news than the one they preach, he said, "Let God's curse fall on anyone who preaches different." kind of gospel amen so that that the passage reminds us that still our last or our final authority is coming from the word of god so it is the very own word of god that lead these heroes of faith to their destiny that made them accomplish their purpose in life let me tell you this the secret of being blessed is being obedient to God, obedient to His Word. So the blessings that you have right now, maybe you are being overwhelmed if you, are, if you experience blessing, but let me remind you, it is not complete yet. It's not enough compared, compared to the blessings that is awaiting for you when you learn how to obey the God or our God faithfully. When you learn how to obey God, our God, faithfully, God will entrust you more things. Amen? If you are in need right now, claim the promises of God that He will supply your needs. As the Apostle Paul blessed the Philippians church for their partnering with him in the ministry, in, in, in giving, 
He said this passage in, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, My God will meet ev your every need out of His riches in the glory that is found in Christ alone. Amen. So release these blessings to the person next to you. Okay? Look at the person next to you and say this. My God or our God will meet your need or our needs or our every need out of his riches in the glory that is found in Christ Jesus. Amen. Meditate on this word that your God, that our God will meet our needs according or out of his riches in the glory that is found in Christ Jesus. So the blessings that we need can only be found in Jesus. So stop looking around for a provider because Jesus is the one who will provide for you. When you see your bank statement is diminishing, speak to it and say that your blessings is on the way. Your living allowance from God or from your Father in heaven is coming. It's, it's on its way. Amen? You will see more of God's provision during this crisis. Amen. You will see more of God's provision during this crisis. I'm amazed of, of how God provides for us. And even uh, for our church needs during this pandemic. Personally, God is blessing others to bless us. We just received a blessing a few days ago and a gift card last, last night while preparing this message. So even people who are not attending our church, they're sending their tithes to our church. That's God's provision for us. Truly, our God is the source of all blessings. He is the one who will decide to bless us, who has the final authority over our needs. So begin to claim God's promises and release the blessings. Amen? So secondly, remember, God's word is our source of hope. Because God's word is our final authority, He is the source of hope. By faith, according to verse 20, 22 in our text, by faith, Joseph recalled the exodus of the Israelites at the end of his life. Uh, and gave instruction about burying his bones. So when it comes to hope, the word of God is the final word to give us hope. Joseph, being promised by God through the promise that was given to his ancestors, recalled the hope of Exodus. What is Exodus? It means escape. Escape. Okay. By, by his faith unto God, gave uh, by his faith unto God, gave this instruction to his children to bring his bones with them when they are living or about to leave Egypt and bury in the same place where his ancestor Abraham was buried. So God's word is a promise. Remember that. A promise that we should be meditated on night and day it is a promise to the people whom god made his covenant god's promise is way beyond humans promises because when man gave his promise it is not guaranteed in matthew 5 jesus said again you have heard that it was said to the people long ago Or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for, for you cannot. You cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. So for us, when you promise something to God 
when you say yes, do it. If you're not going to do it, don't make any promises. So when God gave his promise, he will do it. Because God is true, he is true to his promises. So never allow the distractions in life to take you away from the word of God. Abraham was told, uh, Abraham, I mean, Abraham told God's promise to Isaac, and then Isaac told it to Jacob and Esau, and Jacob, who became Israel, told it to Joseph, and then Joseph told it to his sons. Up to their last day on earth, they ask a word or, or say a word to their uh, or they ask a word from their children to bring with them their bones on their exodus to be buried in the land that God has promised for them. So a person who is focused on the word of God will be definitely receive what he believed. James 1 says that pe those people are uh, like uh, the, the Verse seven: People like that, that people like that, should never imagine that they will receive anything from the Lord. If you believe in God, you need to believe in Him. Don't be tossed back away by by doubt, like uh, being tossed uh, by the wind in the in uh, in the sea. That the Bible says. Those people who are double-minded, I believe I uh, didn't put it there exactly, the passage, but if you have your Bible in James chapter 1, verse 7, it says, People like that who doubted the word of God, they said, it says, People like that should never imagine that they will receive anything from the Lord. They are double-minded, unstable, in all their ways so make it sure that we are not double-minded don't be double-minded double-minded never doubt the word of god when you are losing hope turn to god in his word when you watch news these days whether local or abroad you will lose hope because people were dying violence or chaos everywhere and even our nations are divided by, by uh, beliefs and politics. So worried of the future will bring especially, uh, we are worried about the future uh, will bring, especially to the next generation. So say this to the person next to you, do not lose hope. God has a better plan. Amen. Say this with me. I will not lose hope because God has his best plan for me. Amen. So when things happen or when uh, things happening around us, turning to the opposite of what God has prepared for us, begin to look back on the promises of God and begin with yourself as you tell others that there is hope in God and it is and it is found in his word. John 16, verse 33. This is our memory verse last Friday. Uh, Jesus said, I have said these things to you so that you will have peace in me. In the world, you have distressed, or in other translation, troubled. In this world, you have trouble. Okay? If you are in Christ, you... Uh, you are in trouble in this world because this world hate Christ. The prince of this world, which is Satan, hate Christ, hate Jesus. So we are in trouble and as long as we are in this world. We face trouble. We experience problems, trials, pain, suffer. We suffer or suffering. So we we, we, we experience difficulties in life. So we have distress. 
Are you stressed right now? That is part of what Jesus said in, in this passage. But he said, be encouraged. Be encouraged. Say this to the person next to you. Be encouraged. Because Jesus said, I have conquered the world. Amen? I have conquered the world. Jesus overcame the world and we should not worry about things that will happen in the future. So as Jesus gave the same warning to his disciples and even to us in our days, be encouraged and no matter what trouble we may face here on earth, your hope is in Jesus. Amen. The assurance that was given to Joseph is the same assurance that Joseph Pass on to his children. My dear friend, are you feeling hopeless in this time or at this time? Is there anything in your life that slows you down to believe what God has promised you? To turn away from those things and start to believe in the reality that there is hope. And you will find it when you dig in the word of God or into the word of God. So our source of hope is in Christ alone, that He can be, uh, and and it can be found in 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 His Word. And lastly, because the 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 Word of God is our final authority. Lastly, it is our source of redemption or freedom. Source of redemption or freedom. Twenty eight, twenty nine says, by faith He kept the the Passover. And the sprinkling of blood in order that the destroyer could not touch their firstborn children. By faith they crossed the Red Sea as if they were on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried it, they were drowned. So Moses witnessed on how God rescued the Israelites from slavery. And it is through the blood. The Passover that shadows the death of Jesus on the cross, freed them from the bondage of slavery. There were different kinds of plagues driven to Egypt, but one thing that let them go, and that, uh, that plague is the death of every firstborn. This plague is the opposite of what the world, I mean, I'm sorry, what the word of God do to the firstborn, uh, normally if you are a firstborn, the firstborn is in the family receives the spiritual inheritance or blessings. So the blood of the lamb protected us, protected its firstborn in its family during that time from the spirit of death. Everyone who believed in the word of God that was carried by Moses on how the Israelites should follow every single instructions brings or brought them the result of their freedom. So by believing in God through Jesus Christ, you can find freedom. God will deliver you from every powers of the enemy in your life. God is the source of freedom, the only one who can redeem us from everything that bound us. Are you bound in sickness? Are you bound in curses? Bound in death, bound in broken relationships, even bound in vices, bound in drugs, bound in religion, bound in wrong beliefs, bound in sin. Jesus came to set you free. And he can set you free. So he, he overcame the world, even the prince of this world, 2,000 years ago. His blood that was shed, Okay, he, he, his blood was shed. He died on the cross to set us free from sin and death. The chain of bondage in, in your life right now can be broken no matter how thick it is. Just come to Jesus and surrender your life to him. According to Psalms 107, in verse 14 says, He brought them out of darkness and uh, the utter the utter darkness and broke away every chains. So the Israelites has been have been in Egypt for more than 400 years, and most of those years were under slavery. 
So no matter how long you've been struggling with these things that slaves you right now, God can deliver you from it. And that day is today, right now. If you will only allow Jesus to save and rescue you, you will no longer be in the bondage situation in your life. Jesus said in the book of John 8.36, If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So in Jesus, there is freedom. When he sets you free, you will be free indeed. The God-given promise should not rely on your own desire, of, uh, but what God does. Consider God's plan for us as our final authority, where first His Word will navigate us. Navigate us, that, that is why we need to allow the Word of God to navigate us to the place where God wants us to go or to be. Go where God wants you to go. Do what He wants you to do. Don't get stuck in the situation that is not planned for you. God will navigate us to a situation where His Word will come true. Secondly, be assured that everything that God has said will happen. It may, it may, it may, be, it may take months or even years, but be assured it will happen. By trusting God for what He, he said, it pleases him. So believe in, in God. Believe in his word. Don't question God uh, in his promises, but just believe and it will happen. And lastly, looking forward to it. God's promise will fulfill at the right time. When it, does, when it uh, didn't happen in your life, it will happen in your next generation. It is for us to desire. <clears throat> but God will make it to happen in the right time and pass it on to the next generation. I will conclude in this passage in the book of Proverbs. Can you, uh, in the book of Proverbs chapter 16, in verse 9, it says, The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. I will repeat that. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. We can plan as many as we can, but remember it is God who will give his final authority of that things to happen to us. And this, this is a good news. If it's not his will, he will not let it happen to us. To conclude our message this morning, the final authority that we should honor is what God has said. No matter what people say, no matter what the circumstances be, no matter even what even ourselves think, still God's word and he has the final word for us. Therefore, ignore everything that is not in line with the word of God and live according to what God has planned for you. So let God finish or make the final touch of your life. Amen. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, thank you God for reminding us that you has the final or you have the final authority in our lives and help us to submit to surrender everything to you, to allow you, your word, your plan for us might happen or will happen. Lord, I pray for everyone who is connected on this gathering, online gathering. I pray for your blessings upon each one, O oh God, that may your will, your plan be uh, happen to us, O oh God, and we submit ourselves to you. Lord God, we offer ourselves to you that every plan of yours will happen to us. You have the final authority over us, O oh God. And we submit, we subject our will to you, that your will be done. Father God, receive our praises, honor, and glory unto your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.